Today on the book break, I'm here at the Antlers Hotel in Colorado Springs, Colorado for the Superstars Writing Conference. And I get to talk to Rebecca Mesta, a phenomenal woman. Let's go. Rebecca Mesta and I'm so excited to talk to her. She is an author, entrepreneur, publisher, all kinds of wonderful things we're going to talk about. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We've got here Fiction River and this is an anthology that you edited. Yes. So you're an editor too. I edited three anthologies for um, WMG Publishing. This line of Fiction River anthologies for which my husband also edits. Um, my three are young adult anthologies because I'm mainly a young adult and middle grades author. How long have you been writing for? Um, I've been writing since I was a kid, except I was always practicing because I was waiting for a time in my life when I was not busy so that I would have time to write. And what I didn't realize is there's never time. You just have to take the time. So when I was in my 30s, I started writing in earnest and started sending things out and getting published. And when was your first book published? Um, 1995, I think, wow. was my first book. So you, you are a veteran with, with this. I seem to be. <laughs> <laughs> and how many books do you have out? About 40. I've, wow. I've done all sorts, like I've done editing and, and I've done writing books and then the fiction books and I've also ghost written. This book, a couple of teenagers get sent through a doorway into an alternate world that's kind of like Atlantis with science and magic and they find out that it's under threat and they are the key to saving the universe and all worlds from a great evil. And you you co-wrote this with Kevin J. Anderson, who yes. happens to be your husband. Coincidentally. <laughs> now, you know, they, they joke about like working together is difficult when you're married. Tell me, how does this work out for you? It's a little bit tricky, and it took a couple of years to perfect the system. Um, but we found a way not to seem like we're critical when we're revising and editing and I think that was the main spot because if you write in red ink all over something somebody's written yeah. you feel like they're your English teacher and telling you I'm sorry you flunked this yeah so that's a really bad feeling and um, we don't do it that way anymore yeah and how long have the two of you been writing together um, since uh, 91, I believe. Wow. And <laughs> a short story or two and then novels. And then full books. Yeah. And then in addition to writing together, you help run a publisher. I do. We publishing have a publishing house. house and we have uh, 90 some authors and hundreds of books out. And, and and do you focus on a, a specific genre? What kinds of books does your publishing house do? We have a wide variety, um, but we mostly focus on science fiction and fantasy writers. And we try to get people who are established in the field and who have books that maybe have gone out of print, and we help them come back into print and distribute those. And then we also introduce some brand new authors to the field. And then um, I wanted to talk about also because you teach this writing as a team sport. This is a book on collaborating and even though my husband and I collaborate on writing that we collaborate on teaching, uh, we collaborate on running four different companies and so we wanted to make this not just about collaborating and writing but kind of cover all the basis of what makes a good collaboration, what are the different ways of doing it and what are the pitfalls and to summarize, if you're going to collaborate with somebody in business you should have a contract and we've got a sample contract and some of the bases you need to cover. Yeah, do, do you find that that's one of the trickiest things or what do you find for people that are trying to collaborate that is maybe a big challenge they have to overcome? The biggest challenge I think is getting a, 
agreeing on a vision for whatever it is that you're working on um, so that the vision is unified and you're not trying to go different directions because I think that causes the most rifts between people. Yeah, and and with collaborating, I mean, it, you could be a co-author, it could be an anthology maybe. Correct. And, and so... When you have done some anthologies, I know right now we're here in Colorado at the Superstars Writing Conference, and as superstars, if they're an alumni, then they can uh, submit to be in an anthology, right? That's correct. And, and how many anthologies have these students done? Um, oh, boy. Uh, let's see, there's the Purple Unicorn Anthology, the Red Unicorn Anthology, the Dragon Writers Anthology, the Undercurrents, Sea Monsters, and things like that. We're going to have a new one this year that everybody will contribute to, and that will be Pirates. And how can our viewers find these books? Um, these books are... Uh, most bookstores don't carry them in, unless they're specialty science fiction and fantasy bookstores, but every online bookstore carries them so okay. uh, and do you have a specific website for you how can they go to find out more about you i'm rebecca mest on twitter i'm rebecca mest on facebook i actually have room for friends still awesome. on facebook i also have an author page um, i don't tweet and post a lot okay. um, especially when i'm super busy and i'm editing i forget to put things online but i'll try to be better about that okay well that sounds good well thank you so much Rebecca and thank you so much for joining us today on the book break we'll see you next time I wrote what the single eye sees actually as individual talks or sermons that I gave in sacrament meeting. And every time I gave one of those talks, I had lots of people ask me for copies. It got to the point where I was sending out dozens of copies of the talks to people and I thought maybe I should organize them into a book so they'd have, be accessible by, some, by more people. The principal focus of the book, is, as it's stated in the subtitle, is faith, hope, charity, and the pursuit of discipleship. And so I hope people who read the book feel like they have a better understanding of the relationships that are what are faith, hope, and charity. One of the key principles outlined in the fourth section of the Doctrine and Covenants for discipleship is to have your eyes single to the glory of God. That's a New Testament concept that Joseph Smith felt inspired to include in his discussion about the qualifications for being part of the work in this era. And so I use it as part of the title in order to emphasize the eye single to the glory of God. I hope you enjoy it. You can find it at barnesandnoble.com or amazon.com.